How often do you have to save the film? It's okay. tricky because we, uh, so much of the time these days, everything has a temp score. And so- What's a temp score? A temp score is where it's temporary music that the director or editor the editors has dropped in something temporary to give the film the feeling of, you know, so that when they review it, it's got something that's has some music with it so that it gives you a feel of what the final product might be like. Um, and it can be very useful, but the problem is the filmmakers all get so used to it, so they get so attached to it because they've simply because they've heard it so many times over months and months of editing. And it's a and notorious it's thing in, in com film composing called demo love or temp love, and it it's music pulled from other soundtracks, pulled from other places. It's music that was not written for this scene. For any given scene, it's music that was not composed for that scene, but in the, in the filmmakers' minds, because they get so attached to it, and because of the familiarity of it, they have this feeling that oh, this is the best, this is the best possible option for the scene, and so then the composer is basically forced to rip it off or or get so close to it that it just you know soundtrack lovers will spot it right away. Like, oh, the temp music for that scene must have been this, Redemption yeah. or whatever, and so you hear. You, you hear that's why so much film music just is so similar today it just this piece gets regurgitated into this piece which gets regurgitated into this piece, and it's just so much film music sounds so much the same these days temp scores can be helpful and they usually are to some extent helpful to give you as the composer an idea of what they're looking for or the right general atmosphere of what the thing is, but like he was saying, they get so attached, even in a cue that they stick in some little moment that's written for something else that doesn't really have anything to do with the specific scene that you're working on. They get so attached to those little moments only because they've heard it so many times that it's not relevant to what, what you're doing, and they don't realize that audiences seeing this thing for the first time, whether it's this or this, it's not gonna make any difference to them because they haven't been here for months and months and months. They're hearing it objectively for the first time. So it's gonna be more powerful if you have something custom to that scene that has its own voice, maybe in a similar vibe as the temp score, if, if that vibe works. But to me, I mean, there's little things. Oh, I want the note to go up there like it goes in the temp. I just, I like the temp, I like the temp. I just wish they would get away from that and really understand it's gonna so, be better. From my experience, as far as like saving a scene, it's mostly been, you know, follow, do what the temp is doing, do what the temp is doing. How often do you actually get to write original score since there's so much temp love going on? Uh, there's a friend of ours that we, that we went to school with that has done a lot of short films and series and things, and we've scored a lot of things for him. And that's one of the few times where he just said, do what you would do. Do your thing. That was actually you nice know. because he, he would temp it all for himself as he's editing it or having it edited. And so there'd be temp score, but then when he would show it to us, and we'd spot it, he wouldn't put. He wouldn't. I mean, he might sort of be attached to it, the music, but he knows. Okay, they're gonna do their own thing, and he always just trusted us. And so he'd show it to us and spot it without the temp, and he's like, "I just want you guys to do your thing." And and the western feature that we did, the same kind of thing. It was like there was no temp on that. We just got the score. That yeah, that's was really great. That actually was really good. But that's rare. I mean, these were these were not. Um, the norm studio <laughs> features these were not the all the big projects that we've worked on all have had very specific temp follow the temp follow the temp follow the temp because there are directors who are like the temp's fine but we really want you to do your own thing that does happen but but it ends up usually it ends up that they still are attached more attached to the temp than they they'll realize they'll say that and then, yeah they'll yeah. say do your own thing and then it, ultimately they're, they're but I don't know that's a hard it's a hard question what I would say is I think that the temp is important because you know the process people want to see as it's happening well what's this going to be like and before the composer has had a chance to work on it or before the locked picture although there's no such thing as locked picture anymore but until it gets somewhat close you know they're not going to bring the composer in so yeah, i think it's an important process to have something to show like this is where the film is headed and without any music it's really hard for executive, for non-creative people to, to yeah, for imagine st anything. Studio screenings and for investors and things, they need to see as much of a finished product, at least what seems like a finished product as possible. So, but what I would say, as far as if there's any kind of advice about that, I would encourage filmmakers to, since they have the process of living with temp music, also give yourself a chance to live 
to live with the first version or the first couple versions from the composer. Live with that. Try to get used to that and allow yourself to get used to that. That's just our buddy of ours. He was he was really good at that. Like uh, we would compose something and he would listen to it and be like, "Oh, that's not what I was expecting." Play it again. Play it again. And sometimes and he'd, he'd come back it, the next day, he'd yeah. take it home and listen, and, and then he'd be like, "You know what? Try to get I'll used to it. In love with it, and I think it's better than what I had put in, put in there." And blah blah blah. Because a lot of the attachment that the filmmakers have to music, like we said, is simply just being so used to it. Where it's not about how the dramatic uh, influence it has. It's simply it simply is being used to it, and they don't they're not even aware that that's what's happening. And so if you allow the new music, unless you're to permeate. permeate someone like Thomas Newman or John Williams or some of these big names, where they have a very specific thing that people want, a certain style, a certain voice. Um, you know, unless you're one of those guys, it's pretty much become where you're just a tool for the director's whims or the you know the studio's whims, and it's like, well, I'm this isn't really my score. I'm just being forced to rip off the temp score, and that's become so commonplace and normal now. But what you know how it used to be and how I wish it were more now is, the composer is hired to bring their sensibility to the story, their voice, which is what you know Spielberg does with John Williams. He's like, I, I'm just gonna let him do his thing, and 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 he treats it like it's he makes like E.T. He talks about he made it with the intention of music is going to be a major part of this. Music is gonna be that you know that fifth character, and it's all one thing, and so it's. You know, in, in a sense, he's relying on the music to tell the to tell the story, but that was the intent. It's not like, oh, it needs to save the movie. It's it's, it's part of it. But yeah, I wish I wish more people were hired to bring their sensibility and then trust them. If they're you know, if you don't trust them, don't hire them. Hire someone you trust. Hire someone who you know has the power to tell a story through through music. Do and then sometimes it's like the director is almost writing the music. You know, it'd be cool if a line went like this, and they're like, it's like, no, that's not your. It's not your area, but I mean, it is their right because they're the filmmaker. It's their vision, and you have to support yeah. their vision. You just have to go along with it. That's the job. And ul the yeah, ultimately, the job is to please the director and the producers and the studio. It's yeah. not to bring your voice. You know, it's unfortunately, but the job at the is end of the movie, when they're out, out of money, out of time, and they realize they have a bad project. Right. Yeah. The the gig is not. You would think that the gig is to give the audience the best experience, and a lot of times that just doesn't end up happening. Because when it, at the at the end of the day, your gig is to please the director and the producers and make them comfortable. And often, That's the gig. Often, what that is is a big ego stroke to them, making them feel like everything was their idea. And it's just if you want to keep working, you got to know the psychology and know how to wear all these all these hats and talk to people. And, and you cannot like, be attached oh, to your music. You have to be willing yeah. to ditch all of it. Yeah, everything you write has to be. You know, you have to pour 100% of your soul and heart into it. At the same time, knowing this could get thrown away completely, and I have to completely start over, and you have to not worry about it and just move on. And when in meetings and they're critiquing and all this stuff, you know, John Debney is a great example of it. He always, he's always, that's a great idea. I should have thought of that, you know. And whether he's, it's, it's an act or not, it doesn't matter because he keeps working because that's the game now. That's that's how you keep the work. Great to work with. Everybody People loves him, and he can everybody do anything loves him. and do it really well. Yeah. Even if you're stuck.